Hey everyone, I wanted to create a video to help with some sizing analysis because uh, I think sometimes it's just a bit to take in uh, the first time you're doing this, so hopefully this video might help um, get you through a first sizing analysis and get familiar so that you can go on to estimating a uh, preliminary size of your own aircraft design. So from our sizing equation, um, we need to know some relationships and collect data on similar aircraft. So what I've done is uh, use table 2.8 for um, from Roscan's textbook. I've just copied that here so you can see. So 2.8 is just weight data for regional turbo propeller driven airplanes. So what I'm going to do is I'll do a sizing exercise over this uh, next few videos on trying to estimate the gross weight, empty weight, and fuel weight for just a generic simple cruise mission for a regional turboprop style aircraft. I'm assuming that's going to be my design that I'm going to investigate. So what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to uh, tabulate or input all of these uh, takeoff weight and empty weight specifically is what I'm looking for. And Roskam has this nice uh, table and there are 33 different aircraft that fit into this category. So I'm going to use these to try to generate a relationship between my empty weight and my gross weight so I can get my empty weight fraction estimate in my sizing equation. So I've input those into Excel and I have my gross weight for each aircraft and my empty weight for each aircraft. I've checked just to make sure those numbers are correct. Um, and what Roscam recommends is he finds the best fit for the relationship between these two is between the log of the empty weight and the log of the uh, gross weight. I'm just using the natural log. Roscam uses a base 10 log. Um, either one is fine. I played around with uh, the proportion. So if I were to change this, for example, to show you, um, if I find a linear relationship between the log log plot, I get an R squared value of 0.9925, which is pretty good. So we can see a bit of scatter in the data here. Um, if I wanted to plot just log of the gross weight versus linear scale of the empty weight, so imagine this horizontal or vertical axis is just our empty weight now, not the log of our empty weight, we can see this uh, is definitely not a linear relationship. So I might try to change this and have a power law relationship uh, that seems to fit quite well but still not quite as good not 0.9925 so we can do better than this so um, let's double check again and just make sure that it is not a better fit just to assume a linear relationship between empty weight and uh, our gross weight so if I plot a linear scale for empty weight and a gross weight I get an R squared that's still quite good 0.9913 um, that's for a power law relation, and if I change this just to a linear relation, I get 0.9916. So the relationship is somewhere between. We could approximate a linear relationship would be quite simple. Um, I'm just going to follow Roscam's advice, and I'm going to use that exponential power law relationship. So I'll leave this as linear, uh, but it's going to be linear based on our log log scale. So I'll move the data points back over here. So I get back up to that 0.9925. So for our relationship then, I'm going to write this down here so I don't forget what I'm actually plotting. It is actually ln of our empty weight is going to be equal to, now our x value here is um, ln of our gross weight. So I'm going to use some parameter a times ln of our gross weight. W naught plus some constant B. And these are parameters that I've left over from another example uh, that I did. So I'll just overwrite these. 1.0335 is the approximate parameter for the slope of our fit. And negative 0 0.8682 is the intercept for our log log plot. So we have a fit for our aircraft data. We're going to use this for our empty weight fraction approximation um, for our uh, actual sizing exercise. So the next thing we need to do once we have this is we need to figure out what our mission is. So if I scroll up, I've 
sort of got a table created. And what I'm going to try and do is size, like I said, a regional turboprop. And my mission is going to be simple cruise. I'm just going to assume some parameters. So this might be given to you in an RFP, um, or you've come up with these parameters based on market analysis. I'm going to try to design an aircraft that is going to be optimized for 1500 nautical mile range, cruising at 20,000 feet at Mach 0.6. So I'll start by just inputting the mission data. Uh, so start with our cruise range. And this is going to be equal to 200. And I'm going to keep units over here um, as nautical miles. My cruise speed, um, Mach 0.6, so I'll put 0 0.6 Mach. And our cruise altitude is uh, 20,000. And my units are feet. Let me just change this. So what we might want to do is uh, convert some of these values from uh, our non-base units. So if we're going to use Imperial in this case, or British units, um, I want to make sure everything to be consistent is in uh, feet, seconds, um, pounds, slugs, and so on. So I'm going to convert all these so they're in the same base units. And we'll, uh, we'll come back to deal with mock so we can get that in terms of feet per second. So I'm just going to move these down. And I'm going to input cruise range again. Uh, but this time it's going to be in feet per second. So to go from nautical miles, or sorry, in feet. So if I go from nautical miles to feet, there's about 6,076 uh, feet per nautical mile. So it's just going to be equal to my range times 6,076 feet per nautical mile. So I get about 1,215,000 feet. So that's the range of my aircraft. Let me just change this. All right, so we have our inputs. We don't need to carry any unnecessary decimals here. Uh, this is just directly coming from our mission. So let's uh, leave it here for now. When we get to our range uh, segment for cruise, we'll need some engine data. So uh, again, I'm going to just refer to uh, Roscam for now. And Roscam has a useful table. I believe it's table 2.2. Uh, and uh, he just presents some typical values or ranges of values for things like your lift to drag ratio for either a range cruise or loiter mission segment because um, your LRD that you would fly at for an aircraft would be different uh, to optimize for a range or optimize for an endurance, the amount of time you want to fly. So there's just some ranges there for different categories of aircraft. So for example, um, let me just bring this down here so we can see it. This is table 2.2 from Roscam's volume one. So if we were looking at regional turboprops right here, and we want a cruise mission, uh, the range of aircraft that are in the list below, uh, the lift to drag ratio for uh, optimized cruise is around 11 to 13. And uh, because they're turboprops, the uh, specific fuel consumption is on a power basis. So we have this CP, and that is in units of pounds per horsepower per hour. So again, we would need to convert per hour to per second. Uh, but that ranges between 0.4 and 0 0.6. 0 0.4 would be more efficient, 0 0.6 would be less efficient. This is essentially a measure of uh, the amount of uh, pounds of fuel that are burned per hour for every horsepower generated by uh, the engine. And it is usually technology driven, it is not uh, driven by the size of the engine itself. So for turboprops, they all fall within this range. Um, if you wanted to have some improvement, maybe you'd aim around the 0.4 region, um, and depending on the flying conditions. The other parameter we'll need to consider is our propeller efficiency. So that's this eta p value. Um, as there is no eta p value for jet aircraft, only for propeller aircraft. 
So I'm just going to use these values. I'm going to assume maybe some intermediate value for our uh, specific fuel consumption, say 0.5 for now, and I'll assume 0.85, I'll just use this number. Just so we can get some numbers to start. Once we have the table created, you can input any number you want, uh, something that maybe fits your aircraft better. So I'm going to separate that out from the mission data. I'm going to add more stuff here later, uh, but we'll just put in the engine data for now. I am going to write our specific fuel consumption, and I'm going to choose 0 0.5 and that is going to be in the units of pounds per, uh, pounds per hour per horsepower. It just makes more sense for me to write it that way as opposed to pounds per horsepower per hour. Um, I'm going to leave a space because I'm going to convert the units for that and I'm going to put in our propeller efficiency. So prop efficiency and I'm going to put in 0 0.85 and that is unitless. So I'll just leave that blank and make sure I have enough decimals here so I can see the value I put in. So for my SFC, I'm just going to correct this to units of uh, pounds per second per horsepower. So pounds per second will be burning less fuel um, for every horsepower in a second than you would in an hour. So I should be dividing by the number of seconds in an hour, which is 3,600. So I'm going to take this number up above and divide it by 3,600 to get my units of pounds per second for horsepower. I'll increase the decimal precision. Actually, maybe this would be better just to put into scientific. Uh, and there we go. So we have a number we can read. I'll just format this and move these to the right. Um, all right. Um, in the next video, I'll go over aerodynamic data. Let's uh, talk about our mission segments now. So for our mission, if I assume a simple cruise mission, I'm assuming we're going to have some basic segments. So our segment from, uh, let's say, a 0 to 1, or I'm just going to call it segment 1. Uh, there's a reason I do 0 to 1, so it doesn't turn into a date. So from 0 to 1 is just our taxi and take off. Um, so again, I'm just going to use values from Roscan as estimates for these. Um, so he has some different segments set up. So let's, let's use the ones that he's referred to. So let's call this segment one, and I just want this to be a number. I don't want it to be a date. For the love. So the first segment that Roscam rec recommends um, is engine startup or warm up. Second segment is the taxi segment. Uh, third segment is our takeoff. Fourth segment is going to be climb. Fifth segment is going to be um, our cruise, our sixth segment is our descent, and then our final is our landing. And our taxi to wherever we are going to finish our mission and turn off our aircraft. So under this column here, I'm going to just copy this and I'm going to actually calculate my weight fractions. So these are the weight fractions or the fractional change in the aircraft weight due to the burning of fuel for each of these mission segments. So I'll show you uh, the table here from uh, from Roscam and the values that are suggested. So this is table 2.1 in Roscam's text. Uh, so for our category of aircraft, again, we are regional turboprops. We are going to be looking at these values. So it recommends just an average. You can use these to start. Um, engine startup is about 0.99. You burn 1% of your aircraft weight. Um, for this aircraft, regionals with uh, maybe busier airports might have a longer time spent warming up, depending on the weather, and maybe some more time taxiing. So our taxi mission weight, 0.995. Takeoff, 0.995. Um, 
and climb 0.985. This climb segment is really your uh, the amount of fuel or the weight change just to get up to your cruising speed or get up above a certain threshold altitude. It would not necessarily be your full climb because uh, a lot of that climb segment, especially if you have a longer time to climb, uh, is usually included in part of your range. So that might be uh, calculated that weight fraction as part of your range weight fraction. So uh, to not doubly count it, we'll use 0.985 for now. Uh, Reamer uh, shows a relationship where you can estimate your climb or your takeoff and climb um, combined as one estimation and is based off of your cruise Mach number. Um, but I'm just going to use this value for now. And then finally, descent. So again, descent, you would not be flying to your destination at your cruise altitude and then descending um, corkscrew pattern down to your landing. Usually part of your descent or a large part of your descent would be still fulfilling that cruise part of your mission. So 0.985 suggests it's reasonable for this category of aircraft. And then finally, 0.995, close to one um, for the last landing, taxi, and check time. So I'm gonna input these values for um, all of our segments except for our cruise, which you'll notice wasn't in that table. So 0 0.990 for engine startup, 0.995 for our taxi and takeoff. Um, 0.995, we'll already write that one. 0.995 for climb, suggest 0.985. I'll skip cruise range, we'll go to descent, 0.985, and then 0.995 for landing and taxi. So for the cruise segment, we're going to use our range equation rearranged to figure out what our weight fraction is based on our uh, mission cruise requirements uh, which will be a function of our uh, lift to drag ratio which we need to figure out our fuel consumption rate our propeller efficiency uh, and our actual cruise range so in the next video we'll go through calculating those values so that we can get a, uh, an approximation for our cruise range. Um, I'll go through how I would estimate uh, the aerodynamic information to get that maximum lift to drag ratio using a method that's a uh, preliminary method that's presented in Reimer's text. Um, and then we'll continue from there.